Okay, after having asked your community how often or at least how much of an upgrade a GPU has to be in order to rationalize the expense, did your findings fall in line with your expectations? Hmm. I don't know, I don't know if I really have expectations for that sort of stuff. Um, I'm always just like, I'm wondering, so I'll ask. But I guess the expectation is similar, like, you know, we're pretty reasonable and realistic with any expectations we would have. So for example, we're not expecting that you guys upgrade every single year or, you know, a 10% performance gain at the same price point will entice you to upgrade at any point in time. It's just not worth it. So yeah, I, I don't think we're ever shocked by the results. It's kind of like, yeah, that's pretty well ballpark where I was expecting those things to, to line up. What we have seen is, which I highlighted in, I think it was the 1700 XT versus 1600 XT 50 game benchmark was that in 2019, I think the majority of you were around a 50% performance uplift. And then the second highest bracket was 60 and then it went 40 and staggered down from there. Whereas now it's like you guys are very much wanting 60% or more, probably more than that based on the comments I was reading. Uh, and you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% saw almost no votes. 50% uh, or a little bit, but it was overwhelmingly 60% or more, which um, does suggest to me that it's more of you are going for the more because you are paying more. Like like I said, the 7900 XT, it's about twice as expensive as the 5700 XT and it's only twice as fast. So twice as fast seems really good, but then it's twice as expensive. So same cost per frame. Yeah. Of course, you are getting stuff like half decent ray tracing performance, whereas the 5700 XT had no ray tracing performance. Uh, that's about it, right? And obviously more VRAM. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was interesting to sort of see that, you know, I had always, my thinking was that the current strategy of trying to push people up in price hasn't been super successful. It has been successful to some extent, but it hasn't been as, hasn't worked as well as I think the companies would have hoped, especially for this generation where sales have been fairly weak. And I think the poll is kind of one way of sort of, seen that play out where yes gpus are more expensive now but clearly consumer expectations have gone up too so it's not where nvidia and amd have just broken people where they still want 50 percent more performance but now they're perfectly fine paying exorbitantly higher prices as prices have gone up people's expectations have gone up which kind of is working against the price increases which is what you'd expect and hope to happen. You'd hope that if companies are pushing up their prices, that people would be wanting more. If people are not wanting more and they're just tolerating the higher prices, then that's bad for the market because that's just validating what they're doing. And mm. whereas if people are going, what you you know, you're fine to raise prices, but you're not delivering me the performance that I'm I'm wanting. You know, I'm, if you're, I'm having to pay more, I'm wanting more than fifty percent. I want seventy percent. I want eighty percent, which I think is perfectly valid. And that's that seems to be what the poll uh, was showing, which I think is interesting because there's, you know, I guess there's been sort of maybe this perception that people are just accepting what's going on at the moment, but it it feels like among the community, there are still those people, especially the mid-range buyers, not so much people buying 40, 90s who can afford to pay whatever price is, is put up there, but very much in the mid-range, there has been this sort of angst about, you know, I buy GPUs at $300 mm. and I've been getting absolutely nothing for many, many years. And so now if I'm wanting to, if I need to spend more money, I want more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a perfectly valid point to, to, to take, right? Like it's yeah. perfectly acceptable, right? It, make, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it comes back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, whether this is a sort of a long-term strategy or a really long-term strategy where they're just trying to correct pricing of the past and make it a you know a, the, the 700 to 800 dollar us mid-range the norm or if it's sort of this like almost tiktok type strategy where it's like okay so we release one generation that offers a really nice performance bump and value bump in terms of cost per frame so it's a mm -hmm. the really exciting generation then we sort of refresh that with garbage then we release the next generation which we have to sort of leverage some kind of unique feature to sell that generation. And then the next generation is exciting again in terms of cost per frame and the cycle repeats. Whereas it's not every single generation leaps things forward like it was. Mm -hmm. And you know, that can be because it's becoming increasingly difficult to get those gains and make those advancements. So they're having to sort of 
you know, milk it over a longer period of time? I'm not sure. I, I guess time will tell yeah. what the strategy is there, whether they're just trying to, you know, get everyone used to the high prices. And when we get three generations away from now, we're not having these conversations to death over and over and over again. It's just like, hey, the thing's $800, buy it or don't. Like, Yeah, to- I mean, it's been complicated over the last decade by some yeah, you have various different factors. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was looking just recently for a, the GPU pricing update videos. I don't think I put this data in, in the video or anything because it wasn't super interesting. But I was just looking at you know where have the tiers over time been. You know, what's been like the the ADTI, what sort of performance mm-hmm. differences that given to the previous gen products and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know, there has been some clear generations where Nvidia has not done very well there. I think mm-hmm. that, as we've talked about the the generations that are quite obvious, like Turing, but some of those have coincided with various different other factors like cryptocurrency mining. There's been two clear periods where that has influenced GPU pricing, where mm-hmm. GPUs have been unavailable for six months to longer. There's one shorter period many years ago, and there was obviously the more recent one. Those do affect buying decisions from people and affect pricing and all sorts of things. And it does seem to take some time for things to sort of correct back. Mm-hmm. I think with Ampy, for example, that was a clear correction from Turing not selling very well and underperforming in terms of NVIDIA's, you know, you can look at their financial reports from that generation and, you know, it didn't sell as well as the previous generation in Pascal. So they come out the next generation and they do a bit of a correction there. So I guess these things ebb and flow. You s- then you see this generation, Ampere sold super well. So what do they do? They correct it back the other way. So, and again, you know, there's just many different factors that go into these things. <laughs> so, Yeah. That's where we're at at the moment. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens throughout the rest of the lineup because, as I said, we're sort of still midway through. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm.